Hey, y'all. I'm here in, well, in Chaos Central, if I'm honest, uh, to make an announcement and to introduce a new series. The announcement is I'm getting ready to start a new build. And the new build is going to be a Gatton CNC router. Yeah, I know. I hear you out there. Mark, you've got the Sidewinder. Yeah, I do. You just recut the gantry. Yeah, I did. You've got it all put back together. You just got it up and running. Yeah, it is. It's all pretty and blue and everything. Yeah, it is. Don't you like the Sidewinder? Oh, yeah, I love it. You know, don't get me wrong. But the Sidewinder has two problems. One is size, just simply put. Because of the arrangement and the layout in my shed, I can't cut parts as big as I need to be able to cut them. The other problem is orientation. See, on my Sidewinder, the long axis is the x-axis from side to side. And the entire gantry moves in that x direction. So as a consequence of that, I have a lead screw right in front of me whenever I'm working with it. So in order to work up on the table, I have to constantly remind myself that you have a lead screw here. Don't lean up against it. So that's one problem with it. The Gatton CNC, on the other hand, the gantry moves on the y-axis from front to rear. So I can more easily get right up on it and reach into the back of the table without the need of getting up on a step stool, for example. So it's actually going to be a little bit better for the way my shop slash shed is laid out. So that's what's going to happen. We're going to call this part one of the build series, which I introduced the build, and now I'm going to do something, as I said before, I'm not really a fan of. We're going to do an unboxing of the Gatton CNC kit. Now, I'm not a big fan of unboxing videos at all, but maybe I can give you a little bit of information that will help you decide whether you think this is going to be the right way for you to go or not. So let's get in the box. Okay, when you open up the kit, you, oh boy, see all kinds of wooden loveliness. And we can get going right now. Oh boy, here's uh, a couple of router mounts and the router mount plate. Now, the router mounts were designed for a router with a three and a half inch base, like the Porter Cable Model um, 690 or the 890. And there's a, a couple of other brands that have that three and a half inch router motor body that'll fit in here. But something to uh, pay attention to, for instance, I have the Porter Cable Model 890, and it has a spindle lock. Now, you see these little cutouts here. These are for the locating tabs on the router body. And the 890 also has a spindle lock that sticks out a little bit far, so sometimes I have to go in and make a slight modification to get it to... Uh, to get it to fit in there correctly, because uh, these may not be cut quite big enough to clear that spindle lock, depending upon the orientation, how I'm going to turn the router in the mount. Of course, then again, I may just go ahead and bite the bullet and get a Porter Cable 690 so I can have my 890 back and use it as a handheld. But uh, we'll see what happens down the road. Um, now, Dave cuts... This is the uh, router mount plate that gets bolted to the... Uh, to the Z box. Now Dave cuts these out of pure bond plywood, and I got to say I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the plywood. Um, it looks like all of the inner core is poplar, and not just whatever they happen to have lying around. Um, the face veneers are at least twice as thick as the veneer was on that. El Cheapo plywood I built the Sidewinder out of. So, it's got that going for it. Okay, here's the gantry side with, oh, look at that pretty logo. I'm going to have to do some neat paint work on this, I guess. And, uh, it too looks real good. Um, no voids. There's a little bit of discoloration there. But, you know, poplar 
It can be seven different colors, all within a six-inch span. Okay, this one is uh, drilled to mount the Xylotex NEMA 23 motor. So that tells me that the motor will be on the right side of the uh, of the CNC as I face it. So that gives me something to plan for there. And here's the other side. So, okay, and we have the little pockets cut for the lead nut blocks, which will go in, get glued and screwed there as we carry on with the build. So, put these to the side. Speaking of lead nut blocks, here are all three. Two for the Y axis, one for the Z, and this will be for the X up in the gantry box itself. Uh, that being the upper, this being the lower brace. So, we're all set there. Okay, here we have a couple of Z axis sides and the Z axis front plate. I'm also going to document a couple of modifications I'm going to make. Now I do have one little void right here, but it looks like it was a knot. So, that's okay. I'll putty it and fill it. I am going to be painting this, by the way. I was thinking about stain, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and paint it. I'm in southern Oregon, and if you know anything at all about Oregon, you know it is green. And the reason it is green is because it rains. And paint is the best option for something that's, even though it's going to be out of the weather, it's going to be out in a humid shed, shop. Okay, the Z-Box top and bottom with bearing support. And here are motor mounts, again drilled and cut for the NEMA 23 motors from Xylotex. And bearing mounts for the opposite end of the y-axis. So, okay, we're all set there. And then here is the z-plate that the z-box will mount to. We got that upside down, I believe. Yes, I do. And then the z-axis back plate that will go on the back of the gantry box with this running in between. This is turned around backwards. Obviously, this would be the back of the gantry. These would be mounted here, like so. Okay, so that's what's in the box. So, all in all, I'd say I'm pretty impressed with the quality. The, uh, the wood that's used is... Uh, actually very nice. Um, I know in my cabinet making days something like this it it is pretty close to the grade of plywood we used in the cabinet shops. It's not 100 percent but uh, it's not meant to be cabinet grade plywood. So that's what's in the box. That's what's in the Gatton CNC uh, router kit and um, I like it. I like it a lot. So, we're going to go ahead and call this the end of part one. Uh, the introduction to the build, the unboxing of the kit. Um, I'm not going to be able to go into 100% step-by-step tab A into slot B type instructions. Because as far as I know, that could be 200 episodes. And, you know, I, I hear you out there, by episode 60, you'll be going, just shoot me, please, just shoot me. So, we'll hit the major, major... Um, steps involved, and uh, I'm also going to show you a couple of modifications I have in mind for it. Um, but as it sits, we'll go ahead and we'll call this the end of part one. Uh, in the next part I plan on posting, uh, we'll get into planning for a CNC. That's not something I've ever seen anybody else talk about, uh, getting into uh, a realistic look at exactly what size you need, what you need to plan for physically, monetarily, and um, space constraints, things of that nature. Uh, it's not something I've ever seen anybody 
talk about before, but it's a real important step, and it might be the most important step, because it's all great to have a bunch of shiny brand new parts, but if you don't know what to do with it or how big you need to make it, you can get in trouble real fast and spend a lot of money on something that you just don't have space for. So we'll talk about that next time. As it sits right now, we'll say this is the end. If you got anything at all out of this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up down below. The, they do make a big difference. And uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you want to follow this build, I will be creating a playlist. But if you want to follow this build, uh, consider subscribing. That way you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. So, thank you all for watching, and have a good one. Take care.